Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Today our subject is school community and teacher. It is lecture number thirty-two, and uh, today we'll we will discuss about ethics of technology. The outlines of the lectures are that uh, what is meant by ethics, ethical issues of uh, information age, and ethical and moral issues. First of all, what is uh, ethics of technology? so before proceeding here uh, i would like to explain the technology ethics or principles that uh, can be used to govern technology including factors like risk management and individual rights they are basically used to understand and resolve moral issues that have to do with the development and application of technology of different types Ethics in technology is a sub field of ethics addressing the ethical questions specific to the technology age. So there are different ethical issues in technology like nuclear technology, biotechnology and information technology are the major technological innovations raising ethical and moral issues. The major ethical or moral issues in technology include ethical dilemmas, health issues job displacement and gender it is often held that technology itself is incapable of processing moral or ethical qualities since technology is merely tool making ethical uh, use of computers has like respect the privacy of others respect the integrity of the computing system always identify the user accurately respect copyrights and licenses respect the intellectual property of others exhibit responsible sensible use of computer hardware software and data then there are four ethical issues of the information age the ethical issues basically uh, includes accuracy of the information accessibility of information ownership of the information and uh, it implies occupational health and safety quality of life so these factors can affect information system quality such as reliability and security so there are some common ethical issues like unethical leadership toxic workplace culture discrimination and harassment unrealistic and conflicting goals questionable use of company technology so the first one is privacy this is main ethical issue of information age the major issues concerning privacy in the information age is the conflict between personal privacy and the state society or related organizations which involves online privacy employee monitoring trade off between security and privacy and good business is result versus privacy so two forces threaten our privacy one is the growth of information technology with the whether it's enhanced capacity for surveillance communication computation storage and retrieval a second and more ancillary threat as the increased value of information and decision making information is increasingly valuable to policy makers they covert it even if acquiring it and wards another privacy so if the privacy is concerned so broadly speaking privacy is the right to be let alone or freedom from interference or intrusion information privacy is the right to have some control or how your personal information is collected and used so there are some example of privacy like privacy is the state of being free from public scrutiny or from having your secrets or personal information shared when you have your own room that uh, no one enters and uh, you can keep all of your things there away from the eyes of others so this is an example of situation where you have privacy 
so privacy is the state of being free from public scrutiny or from having your secrets or personal information shared so privacy is essential to who are as a human beings and we make decisions about it uh, every single day so it gives us space to be ourselves without judgment allows us to think freely without discrimination and is an important element of giving us control over who knows what about us then the second one comes accuracy what do you mean by accuracy the condition or quality of being true correct or exact freedom from error or defect precision or exactness correctness chemistry physics the extent to which our given measurement agrees with the standard value for that measurement so compare precision so in other in other words accuracy describes the difference between the measurement and the parts actual value while precision describes the variations you see when you measure the same part repeatedly with the same device so according to iso 5725-1 the journal term accuracy is used to describe the closeness of the measurement to be true when the term is applied to the sets of measurement of the same me measured it involves a component of random error and component of systematic error misinformation has the way of uh, folding uh, folding up people's life especially when the party with the inaccurate information has an advantage in power and authority accuracy refers to how correct learners use of language system is including their use of grammar pronunciation and vocabulary accuracy is often compared to fluency when we talk about our learners level of speaking or writing so accuracy refers to how close a measurement is to the true or accepted value precision is independent of accuracy that means it is possible to be very precise but not very accurate and it is also possible to be accurate without being precise the best uh, quality scientific observations are the both accurate and precise the best way to improve accuracy is to do the certain things like read text and uh, dictate it and any document this can be any text such as a newspaper article make correctness to the text by files for more information see correcting your dictations run accuracy tuning for more information see about accuracy tuning so accuracy represents how close a measurement comes to its true value so this is important because uh, bad equipment poor data processing or human error can lead to inaccurate results that are not very close to the truth so precision is how close a series of measurement of the same things are to each other so in accurate data sources companies should identify the raw right data sources both internally and externally to improve the quality of incoming data so like uh, then set data quality goals avoid overloading review the data automate error reports adopt accuracy standards and have a good work environment then comes uh, property what does property mean property is any item that a person or a business has legal title over property can be tangible items such as houses car or appliances are it can refers to intangible items that carry the promise of future worth such as stock and bond certificates in economics uh, the political economy there are three broad forms of property like private property public property property and collective property 
So one of the most complex issue we face as a society is the question of intellectual property rights. Any individual items of information can be extremely costly to produce in the first instance. Yet once it is produced that information has the elusive quality of being easy to reproduce and to share with others. We currently have a several imperfect institutions that try to protect intellectual property rights, copyrights, patents, encryptions, all of confidentiality and such old fashioned values as, uh, as trust, worthiness and loyalty are the most commonly used protectors of our intellectual property. So problem issues however still abound in this area. So let us focus on just one aspect artificial intelligence and its expanding software's expert systems. Property technology is the use of information technology to help individuals and to companies research, buy, sell and management real estate similar to the way fintech focuses on the use of technology in finance. Clear? Access. What does have access to mean? To have access to something means that you are able to see it or use it. For example, if you have access to the internet, it means that you are able to connect to the internet and use it. So access in an information society, a citizen must possess at least three things to be their trait. The one thing is that one must have the intellectual skills are to deal with information. So these are skills such as reading, writing, reasoning and calculating. So this is task for education. So one must have access to the information technologies which store, conveys and process information. So this includes libraries, radios, televisions, telephones and increasingly personal computers are terminals linked to wire network to mainframes. So this is a problem in social economies. So there are some uh, access sentence examples are there that uh, you have Harvard access to the checking account. You have access to that door and don't talk through it. So these are some types of sentences using access. So like uh, uh, what are the examples? Access is uh, as we define as the way to enter or exit a place. An example of access is a road that uh, connects the houses to a highway. The definition of access is uh, the right to use, communicate or approach something or someone. An example of success uh, or access is permission to enter a secure area. So very simply, Microsoft Access is uh, an information management tool that helps you store information for reference, reporting and analysis. Microsoft Access helps you analyze large amount of information and manage related data more efficiently than Microsoft Excel or other spreadsheet applications. Finally, one must have access to the information itself. This requirement returns to the issue of property and is also a problem in social economy. Is technology value uh, loaded or value neutral? So this is uh, what the technology by itself the value neutral. It is the people that use it that or not. If the creation of the new technology like a gun or a smartphone has good or bad effects, it is due to good or bad people not the technology itself. According to the value of neutrality, uh, technology is morally and uh, politically neutral, neither good nor bad. Only its uses have moral or other values, not the technology itself. So value neutrality as described by Max Weber is the duty of sociologists to identify and acknowledge their own values and overcome their personal biases when conducting sociological research. 
they caution readers rather to understand that sociolog sociological studies may uh, by necessity contains a certain amount of value bias. So an example of neutral is a person who does not take sides in an argument between two friends. So an example of neutral is the color term, neither positive nor negative. So is research neutral or value free? According to the venerable way of thinking about science and its place in our lives, science is value free. Science sets its sides on the facts, so it is from inherently subjective matter of interpretation. Science can learn the facts without needing to take a stand on values. According to the most researches, ethics is known to be the value neutral. Like any tool, it is not the tool itself that does anything of any value, hence it is value free, but rather it is the user that is responsible for whatever comes from using the tool. I think technology is simply another tool in a long line and history of tools that have been available to the uh, preachers for a very long time. So what people do with the technology is entirely up to them. Then come privacy. How do you know, how do you define privacy? Broadly speaking, privacy is the right to be let alone, our freedom from interference or intrusions. Information privacy is the right to have some control over how your personal information is collected and used. Privacy is the state of being free from public scrutiny or from having your secrets or personal information shared. When you have your own room, that uh, no one enters and you can keep all of your things there away from the eyes of others. So this is an example of a uh, situation where you have privacy. So privacy is essential to who we are as a human being and we make decisions about its very uh, every single day that gives us a space to be ourselves. Without judgments allows us to think freely without discrimination. and. Uh, is an important element of giving us control over who knows what about us. So privacy is the claim of individuals, groups or institutions to determine for themselves when, how and to what extent their information should be communicated to others. Privacy harms. What do you mean by privacy harms? So there are four types of privacy harms which are as follows like intrusions, information collecting, collections, information processing and information discrimination. So these are the privacy homes. So there are ways to protect privacy. What are the ways that uh, how can we protect our privacy? So there are simple ways to protect your privacy like don't fill out your social media profile. Be choosy about sharing your social security number, even the last four digits. Lock down your hardware, turn on private browsing, use a password value vault that generates and remembers strong and unique passwords. Use two-factor authentications, set up a Google alert for your name. So there are four uh, ways to protect privacy that is technology, law, markets and your choice. For example, reducing spam, uh, technology like spam filters, law, illegal to send commercial emails with false headers. You can unsubs unsubscribe from the sender. Then if we talk about markets, so use an, uh, you choose an email provider that does a good job of uh, reducing spam. And your choice that you uh, decide not to open that email with the unpleasant. The internet ethics introduction. Cyber ethics is the moral, legal and social issues related to the cyber technology. It examines the impact that cyber technology has for social, legal and moral systems. It also evaluates the social pol policies and laws that uh, have been framed in reply to issues generated by the development and use of cyber technology. 
it describes a code of conduct for the user of internet and uh, organizations that introduce new information system must first address legal and ethical issues related to technologies then ethical uh, and moral issues associated with the internet so what are those that are those are cyber bullying provision of misleading information on websites plagiarism use of photo editors to distort reality and uh, privacy hacking and uh, inappropriate websites with illicit material what is cyber bullying electronic aggressions online rumors uh, posting pictures without consent or harassment plagiarism means uh, user students can download anything from the internet they can access any information or data copy paste it and uh, use it as their own information research papers are available freely that are copied very easily then hacking hacking comes that uh, into bank accounts of uh, online users website hacking computer hacking password hacking and etc and remedies are there like copyrights provide plagiarism uh, more developed filter filtering software aup acceptable user policy and uh, privacy policies are there and censorship of certain websites and then uh, uh, if we talk about cell phones then inappropriate cell phones users may include uh, uh, texting while driving invading uh, um, other uh, privacy and uh, bullying and harassment from uh, wrong numbers fraud uh, misleading dealers spreading uh, so this was all about uh, this lecture thank you very much for being with me take care allah hafiz